Hello. Um, so this is probably the first and maybe the last video I'm going to record like this because it took me an hour to try to figure out how to record from above today. So until I find a better method, I probably won't do this again. Um, but so many people asked me for a review on the new set of Schmincke watercolors that I purchased. Um, and I wanted to figure out a way to do that and add in a demo painting as well. Um, I did already unwrap all of them last night because I was just so excited. I also swatched them no less than three times. Um, it comes, I got the 36 set plus three little tubes. The set comes in this box, which has the name and whatnot on it. And it also comes with its own little swatch chart. That comes blank so you can write in the numbers yourself. Um, but for me, this was, I was trying to paint with these last night and it was such a pain in the butt because it was so huge that I couldn't really have it near my palette and be able to see it and use my paints at the same time. So I decided to make my own smaller color chart to go into the palette instead. So this is what it looks like. Um, on the big color chart, I did label them all with the paint name itself. But this one, with, with the number I mean, but this one I just did the names of each one and then each pan has the number written. Um, I also, like I said, got three extra colors which I poured into pans, but I just put the little tubes in for now, just until I have a better place. So the three extras that I got that do not come with this palette are Potter's Pink, Perylene Violet, and Quinacridone Purple. These are the five milliliter tubes. I did roll them up a bit after pouring the pans and they are right down here. Um, I chose this palette because I think the 48 set had more colors in it, but it also had more colors that I wasn't planning to use. This one, I think really the ones I probably won't use very much are just the Jean Brilliant Deep and Naples Yellow because I'm not really a fan of opaque watercolors. I tend to use them because they're transparent and if I want something opaque, then I usually use gouache. Um, but I do love how many blues there are in this set. It's almost an entire row. And I love the Perylene Maroon that it comes with. It's one of my favorite hues as it is. So I think this set has a really good variety. Um, I personally am not a fan of you know, like the smaller, like 12 color sets and even the 24 set, while it had a, a good range of colors, it still wasn't quite enough for my taste. So I went with the 36, uh, they were on sale at Jackson's when I bought them, they've gone up a little bit now. They're still cheaper from there than they are from Blick. Most of them are about half the price that you would find them at Blick. And I think for this palette and the three tubes, I only paid $7 in shipping to get them here from the UK. I ordered them Saturday and they were here by Tuesday. So I think they shipped Sunday. So it, it only took them three days to get here from the UK. And I believe orders placed from Blick for me personally take longer than that. So Jackson's is the place to go for these. Um, they also have five milliliter tubes, the normal 15s, half pans and full pans open stock that you can just buy. So if there are single colors that you like, they are much cheaper there. They also have all of the new Schmincke granulating colors for about $16 a tube or sets of five for, I think they're about $73 versus the $29 that the handful that Blick has costs. So overall, if you're looking to get any Schmincke paints, I would highly recommend going through Jackson's because since it's a German company, uh, it's cheaper to get these from anywhere that is not here, really. So anywhere in the UK, Europe, whatnot, uh, which Jackson's is UK based. So yeah, um, I don't know a ton about pigment information yet. I do know the pigments that are in these. I wrote them down on the larger swatch cards, which of course I left across my room. So I can't really reach those at the moment. Um, but these all come very nicely wrapped. 
Um, maybe I'll insert a photo here. But they come with foil and then a little piece of paper around the outside. They look honestly like little chocolates. And the paper is, well, actually these tubes have pigment information, but the paper is pretty much a condensed version of this. Um, so it's got the number, the name in a few different languages, the light fastness rating, I think that's the series number. And then on the side it has the pigment information here. And it's about the same on the pans as well. And then safety warnings and whatnot, but those are printed on the inside of the paper wrappers for the pans. So there's plenty of information and it's not hard to find what you're looking for. So, all right, I guess I will start my demo painting. So for this demo, I decided to do a painting of a humpback whale because there were just so many blues in the palette that I was so excited about. Um, I haven't really had the chance to play with these very much as I got them right before class last night. And even though I did kind of sneak in some swatches during that, um, I didn't really get to do a painting to play with them. So I'm going in with the Delft Blue here. I think I'll probably mostly make this guy the Delft Blue and the Indigo with maybe a bit of Ultramarine. Got a little outside the lines. That's okay. It's watercolor, it lifts. So as far as my thoughts on these paints go, um, I have primarily been painting with Da Vinci and Van Gogh watercolors for the last, I think about a year or so, uh, a little more than that. And the Van Gogh are student grade, but they are the best by far student grade paints that I have managed to find. Uh, they're very affordable and they're just a really good deal for what you pay. Um, the Da Vinci paints are artist grade, which are also one of the more affordable artist quality brands that I've managed to find. And I was introduced to those by In Liquid Color, or Denise, on YouTube. Um, and actually the first time I ever tried those paints was with a palette that she had made with the company. Um, so that was extra cool. But I have also tried Koi watercolors, Cotman watercolors, and the Prima Marketing watercolors. And as I've said before, I'm not a fan of opaque watercolors. I, I personally, at that point, I feel like if you want opaque, just go with gouache. It behaves, most of it behaves the same as long as it's not acrylic wash. And, you know, that way it's opaque. You can mix it with watercolors and have it work out. But the Prima ones, I was not a fan. They were very chalky, very opaque. Um, they got really muddy. You couldn't really mix them very well together and have them work the way that, you know, you'd want watercolors to work. And uh, the Cotman's I got mostly before I really knew what I was doing with watercolor. Uh, the pans I'm not a fan of. I have a couple of Cotman tubes, I think, in my big palette. Um, my lamp black is Cotman, and I do like that. I also have their lemon yellow and their dioxazine violet in tubes in my travel palette that I poured into pans, and those are pretty good as well. Uh, but the Koi is also, I found to be much more chalky and opaque than I really wanted. So I've consistently looked for more transparent watercolors and I've been very happy with the Van Goghs and the Da Vinci's. Um, but another favorite artist of mine on YouTube, Casey Golden, has been using Schminkas for a couple years now. And I forget exactly what brought me onto the Jackson's website 
last weekend, but something, something did. I think maybe it was in fact the granulating colors because I got an email about them and wanted to check them out. And when I went on, I saw that they were on sale and I had some Christmas money. So I decided to splurge and buy myself this set. Uh, so this, I think I paid 170 for the set and then another $15 for the other three hues. And again, shipping was seven. So it wasn't the cheapest set ever, but at the time, their 24 set of colors was $120 and the 24 set of Da Vinci's that I have was $100. So to me at the time, it really wasn't too, too much of a price difference. Um, also, I just switched up from the Delft Blue to Indigo here, just to add in some deeper tones. Um, so overall, um, I will say there has been, uh, this is Ultramarine Finest that I'm adding, and apparently I got blue on my hand there. Um, there has been a pretty general consensus that I've seen in the reviews that I've watched that say Schmincke are a little bit less, I don't know if vibrant is the right word, but a little bit less saturated than other brands. They, they're a little more delicate, I think is the words that uh, Denise used to describe them. And I would say that's fairly accurate. Um, I am used to the ones that are pretty vibrant, pretty in your face, and these are just not, but I'm also not at all mad about that. I kind of actually enjoy the fact that they're a little more subtle. Uh, Schmicka is also known for having non-granulating colors, so I was very excited at the idea of having some smoother colors to play with since smooth watercolor is something that I've struggled to get. I wasn't sure if it was my technique or my supplies or my paper, but something something was preventing me from getting smooth washes when I painted. But I'm hoping that the Schmicka might help change that. I, also, the brighter blue that I added in here was Helio Turquoise. So I'm not really sure what to do with the background because I don't exactly want to just showcase all blue. So I think I might go in with some different colors and just kind of make it a rainbow background of sorts. Um, so this is manganese violet. This is also a, a more unique set than others that I've found. Um, like I said, for the most part, 12 color sets and even some 24 color sets tend to be a little more generic. The 12 colors mostly have, you know, your classic primaries, mixing colors and some neutrals. And then the 24 kind of expands on that. Um, my Van Gogh 24 set was very nice. It has a lot of variety in colors and it's, you know, kind of how I started building my collection. My Da Vinci 24 set was curated by an artist. Uh, this is quinacridone purple. Um, so of course the colors in that are going to be different than most 24 sets as well. Uh, but the 36 set here, um, I, I did compare the colors, the hues between the sets. And I think that this one is definitely, it had more of a variety and it had more unique tones and hues than any of the other sets that I looked at. Like I didn't really see many, you know, sets that were not huge that had, you know, manganese violet. I've never seen that in a set and I've never seen, you know, phthalo green in a set that wasn't curated because it's in Denise's palette. Uh, but you know, I've never, never seen it otherwise. And uh, I just really like the variety that this one had. I also like the variety in the 48 set because it came with metallic gold and silver, uh, but it also came with white, which I would never use. 
this is the perylene violet um it came with a white which i would never use and it came with a pan of ox gall which i mean that I, I i just don't even know what that would be for so i figured looking at it there was at least six different pans in it that i wouldn't use so there was no point in spending an extra 50 bucks to get it if i could just get the smaller set and fill it in over time with hues that I did like. So that's why I went with the 36 set. These reactivate super well, super easily. I don't think I had issues reactivating any of them so far. Um, I'm interested to see what the Potter's Pink does once the pan fully dries because I just poured it yesterday so it's still pretty wet um it is a little on the dried side so let's see what it does today yeah so it does kind of reactivate fine um i have daniel smith's potter's pink and i honestly hate it because it i think my tube may have been older or sitting for a while but it had separated from the binder and then at the point when I tried to, I poured it into a pan, which ended up being half binder, which then dried into this unmovable glob on top of the paint and the pigment. And I ended up having to throw away half of what I'd put in the pan. And then by the time I actually got it to set up correctly, it just, it ended up being a whole thing. That's not the color I wanted. So it's very hard to reactivate once it's dried. I'm sure out of the tube, it's probably a little easier to use, but I wasn't really, I wasn't very impressed with it in a pan. And because I like to work out of pans versus tube colors, that doesn't really work very well for me. Um, I know Potter's Pink is generally a more difficult hue to re-wet out of a pan but at the same time something that gives me a little bit of hope is the fact that um much like da vinci schminka actually pours their pans from the same formula that they use for their tubes so the fact that they sell pans of the potter's pink kind of gives me hope that maybe it's an okay color to be reactivated So, so far I've used Perylene Violet, Potter's Pink, Manganese Violet, Monochrome Purple, and Helio Cerulean. Um, next I'm going to go in with Thalo Green. This is one of my favorite green colors. It's so bright. So for anyone watching that is not familiar with me, I am currently going to college for art, but I am 23. I've been doing art my entire life. I started, uh, I'm going into May Green here. Um, I started when I was much younger. Uh, when I was really little, my dad and I used to do paintings with those terrible little watercolors. And, uh, We've got plenty of Pokemon that we painted when I was really small. And uh, I grew up in a Waldorf school, so everything I did was just steeped in art and creating. So it's not a new concept to me to be making art so much. Uh, this is transparent yellow. So I am not a graduate with an art degree yet. I'm looking forward to that in 2023, provided it all goes according to plan with the world. Because, uh, you know, anything could change at the drop of a hat here. And I do live in the US, so as of now, with the uh, health crisis, I don't necessarily wanna get yelled at for this video, um, this was transparent orange and I'm just going back into the transparent yellow to kind of blend it out. 
Um, with the current issue at hand, things are a little uncertain as far as like my fall semester goes for school. I know that my college wants to be back in person by then, but at the same time, things are just getting worse. I'm lucky I'm in Maine and our governor is taking things seriously, but at the same time, there's a lot of people who aren't even here. So it's kind of a gamble and just kind of a challenge to try to figure out the future. It's, it's impossible to predict at this point. So as long as things are okay and continue the way that they have been, I will hopefully be able to graduate in spring of 2023. So that being said, since I'm not a professional, I can't really give a professional advice or professional opinion. However, like I said, I have been doing art. Uh, this is Perline Maroon and I did use Scarlet Red as well. Um, I'm not a professional, but I've been doing art pretty much my entire life. And I have used student grade and professional grade watercolors at this point. Um, so I think as far as these paints go, I would recommend them. Um, I will throw an image in the end of the video where this piece dried. I think, I think I'm just about done. I might want to add in a very light wash to his belly. Um, I'll do some We'll do some paraline green. Let's let's be crazy for a minute. Um, but as far as these paints go, I do recommend them. I think they are really good paints. Um, they are very pricey for what they are. They're an investment. I wouldn't recommend them for someone who is just trying out watercolor for that. I would for sure recommend the Van Goghs. Uh, those are much more affordable and it's it's kind of a situation of if you end up trying it and not liking it, you're only out, you know, 30 to $50 versus a couple hundred. Um, the Da Vinci's are also really good for beginners, but those are a little more of an events bit than the Van Gogh's. They tend to run between eight to $20 a tube versus three to $5 a tube like the Van Gogh's do. So I would say if you know that you like watercolor and you would use these types of hues a lot, then I would definitely go for the Schmincke colors if you have the budget for it. Um, if it hadn't been for Christmas, I would not have had the budget for these. And even still, you know, maybe I should have saved my money. This is Indian red. I just want to add a little bit of it in because I love, I love this hue. Um, But yes, I, I do recommend these paints. I think they're really good. If you know that you like watercolor, if you have practice with watercolor, um, but if you just wanna try out, I wouldn't recommend purchasing this brand at all because it is very expensive. And then again, if you find out you don't like it, then you're out a couple hundred dollars. Um, I also did just put on some English Venetian red and I'm going to put a little bit more Potter's Pink here just to try to get it a little more saturated, even though it is a very desaturated hue. Um, I do like if you're able to get it a little bit more layered. It looks very, very pretty. Um, so now that I've said it at least three times, bottom line, I do recommend these paints, but only if you know that you like watercolor paints and only if you are okay making that investment because it is a big investment so yeah uh, those are my thoughts i will probably type out some additional ones in the comments i know this is going to be kind of a longer video this may get uploaded to igtv and or youtube i haven't decided which or both yet um but either platform it goes on uh thanks for watching and of course, I got paint all over my hand. When don't I? Um, thank you for watching, and I hope that this review helped you make some choices. Bye.